Until 1933, the paper money, like $20 bills, were actually gold certificates, and they entitled the bearer to turn them into actual gold coins. In 1928, for example, a $20 gold coin contained about 0.96 troy ounces of pure gold, and you could trade your certificate in for four or $5 coins, two $10 coins, or one $20 coin. But then there was a Great Depression, and President Roosevelt was elected. And in 1933, he issued an executive order that required all Americans to report and then turn in all their gold coins and bullions in excess of $100 face value. Everyone who turned in their gold was given just over $20 per ounce in new paper money, which could not be transferred back into gold. Then, less than a year later, President Roosevelt issued a new proclamation on January 31st, 1934. This one said that he was devaluing the dollar to about 59% of its previous value by reducing its gold content by about half. This meant that everyone who'd just gotten new paper money for their gold a year ago was now down about 59%. Today, in 2012, the $100 in gold coins is worth about $7,840. $45, leaving those who traded in their gold for paper money in 1933 out about 98.7%. Today's dollar is worth less than a grain of gold, and the $20 bill is worth less than six grains of gold. Not too long ago, the dollar was as good as gold. In fact, dollar bills were labeled gold certificates. So just imagine if the dollar was as good as gold once again. If confidence is one of the failures of our financial system right now, would a gold standard restore the faith and confidence and allow us to move on? The loudest voice in favor of dumping the, fe the faith-based Federal Reserve System going back to the gold standard is Congressman Ron Paul. He joins us now by phone tonight. Uh, good to hear you, Congressman. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to be with you. So tell us what the possibility, how would we go about going back to a gold standard? Well, we have some pretty good histories that look at we can look at our own history. We went off the gold standard during the Civil War period, and gold price soared a couple hundred dollars from $20. But at that, we lived in a different time then. In the 1970s, they passed a resumption act, and they had a three-year period in the latter part of the 1870s, and there was a transition. Uh, they quit printing greenbacks. Uh, they withdrew some greenbacks. They balanced the budget, and we weren't, run weren't running a welfare warfare state, and the people, believe it or not, trusted their government and it was a non-event. In three years, uh, the dollar was as good as gold at $20 an ounce. England, after World War I, did the, tried to do the same thing, but they had too many pounds circulating, and they went down back to an old price, and they didn't withdraw any pounds, so it didn't work. And now we have a bigger problem. The transition would be pretty tough. And I've written and talked a lot about this. And you'd have to devise a system where there would be a transition where maybe you could have a gold standard competing with a paper standard. And then, uh, obviously, gold would win out. People well, would sure. eventually go to gold because the paper, uh, we're, we're getting down uh, to, the, to the bottom right now. The last thing before they really rush to gold is the Treasury bill. And, uh, well, pretty, that's, that's about popped, hasn't it, the, uh, the juice on that? <clears throat> yeah, the, you look at what the rates have done just recently. So if, if money quits flowing in there, or what if uh, a few foreigners decide to dump some of that stuff, uh, then, then the panic is uncontrollable. Then yeah. you're going to see uh, gold, instead of being impressed with $20 a day, it might be $100 or $200 a day. I believe that is conceivable. All right, well, let's see if we can get a close-up of what I'm holding in my my hand right now. This is an old dollar. I don't know if you can see. Can you get any closer than this? This is a silver certificate uh, that was issued. I guess they stopped issuing about 30, 40 years ago, something like that. But is this what you were envisioning, where a dollar bill that does have a signature, a dollar after all is a contract. There are two signatures in there, including the Treasury Secretary, and those signatures mean this is a contract that a year from now, the money that you earn should be worth about as much, and if not, if you have got any doubt about this, you can trade it in, and you can see up on top there it says silver certificate for gold or silver. Is that what you want again? To some degree, but uh, there's been a lot of uh, writings about how you might do this in the private market, 
and not have a government monopoly. Because we did have shortcomings in our gold standard because we had bimetallism and we had artificially prices fixed between gold and silver. And you don't want that. You either have to be on a gold standard or a silver standard. But you could. Hayek has written about, uh, uh, you know, baskets of currencies and having this work in the private market. A competing currency could be private. But, uh, yes, eventually what you'd want to do, but most, a lot of people say, oh, we don't want a gold. We can't carry all that gold around in our pocket. Right. No, I think your point that you're making is right. You're, you're still going to have certificates or you're going to have electronic entries. There are people today who are trying to promote this idea through electronic gold. But the problem is, is the legal tender laws force us to use dollars in all, in all settlements. So one of my goals in Washington to move in that direction would be to repeal legal tender laws. Actually, Actually, all we need to do is obey the Constitution because it's still very clear, it hasn't been repealed, that only gold and silver can be legal tender. Believe it or not, they don't even obey the Constitution anymore. Um, we, we believe it now. We've seen enough examples of that, unfortunately, <laughs> the past couple of months. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone. This is Andy in Denver. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to show you how we have been deceived. We have been hoodwinked. Our money was changed at one point and has caused a lot of issues that we see happening today. What I have right here is a silver certificate, good for one dollar, and a Federal Reserve note, also good for one dollar. The silver certificate has a blue seal, the Federal Reserve note has a green seal, and there's a lot of similarities between the two. George Washington is on both pieces of paper, as are the words the United States of America and one dollar, and other various decorations all over the paper. But there's a key difference between these two pieces of paper that we should take note. On the silver certificate, it promises something in fine print. Above the large print, it reads in fine print, this certifies that there is on deposit in the treasury of the United States of America, one dollar in silver payable to the bearer on demand. So there's fine print at the bottom as well, below the words one dollar. So this piece of paper is saying that you can redeem it for one dollar in silver coin. Now that could be a one ounce coin, that could be two halves, four quarters, ten dimes, whatever the denomination, you could get one dollar in silver coin for this piece of paper at one time. The fine print says so. And note that it says one dollar in silver payable to the bearer on demand. One dollar in silver. That indicates a measurement. So this is good for a measured amount of a dollar. Now let's look at the Federal Reserve note in contrast to the silver certificate. It too says one dollar on it, but the fine print is missing. There's nothing below the words one dollar and there's nothing above the United States of America. Instead of saying this certifies that there is on deposit in the Treasury of the United States of America, it just simply says the United States of America. And instead of one dollar in silver payable to the bearer on demand, it just says one dollar. What it doesn't tell you is one dollar of what? There is no measurement. There is no promise to pay out anything. The piece of paper is claiming to be one dollar. But it's not claiming to pay you one dollar in anything. So by removing the promise to pay, how does the paper become what it once promised to pay? Let's look at this another way. I have a mock-up coupon here and a mock-up note. This coupon, like the silver certificate, says coupon redeemable for five oranges at Fred's Federal Grocery Store. You see that five oranges is in large print and then there's fine print above and below the five oranges. This indicates that this piece of paper is redeemable for something. Now if we look at the five orange note, all it says on it is note and five oranges. How, by removing the redeemability does the paper become what it wants redeemed. To put it another way, if you had a certificate or coupon good for five oranges, how much orange juice can you squeeze from one five orange note? I'll give you a hint. None. So by removing the promise to pay something off the paper, they've made the paper become what it once promised to pay. This is deceit. It is a lie and the Federal Reserve note is a nullity. It has no value. It's not redeemable for anything. It's a debt instrument. It says Federal Reserve note at the top, 
instead of silver certificate, it says note. This indicates that you owe somebody something, which in fact you do. Every Federal Reserve note that's in circulation is a liability. There's nothing redeemable for them. They can be inflated at will. And this is one reason we are so in debt as a nation today. That's all I have for now. Thank you for your time.